Hello there guys and welcome back to Civilization. I'm currently playing catch up because I did stall a little bit with getting some workers produced and getting some extra cities founded. We're up to four cities at the moment. I've got Cardiff on the river which was done in the last episode. I've also got Truro down here on the coast which is ideal. It gives me the ability to produce a navy. I do have some other settlers that are just waiting here. What I want to do with those guys is get them a bit further down here and hopefully probably around this sort of area so that I can uh, work Mount Kalash for some extra faith and hopefully get these dyes and this sugar. So putting them around here would be an ideal spot really. But I am waiting at the moment because one of the things that I want to do is, I can't show you from that screen, one of the things that I want to do is be able to build a national college and I must have a library in all cities in order to do that. Now I think we have actually got a library in all cities now, I think we've just bought the last one that was needed. The problem is if I go and found another city then it will put me behind and I'll have to build another library. So. Let's uh, leave the settlers there for the time being. We will we will head out there and build another city when the time becomes appropriate. I could also do with actually getting a military unit down there because I have heard that Mombasa is under attack on the last turn. So it's very possible that there are some barbarians down there, which could be problematic. So I think what I'm going to do is... I must have some military units somewhere. Surely I don't just have those guys right up the top. So here's another handy thing you can do. The menu on the top left hand corner that normally gives you information about our science. If we go down to the little sword and shields, or the uh, musket and a shield. With a look. Uh, hard to tell, they look a little bit like muskets, but I think it's supposed to be sword and shield. And that will give you your unit list. So from here you can see... Uh, what units you have, workers, settlers, caravans. You can also see, I don't want to speak to the military commander. You can see your military overview as well, which tells you all of your units, how much movement they've got remaining, uh, what their strengths are, uh, whether or not they are able to move or they already have moved. So that's quite good. Also tells you your progress towards a great general or a great admiral. So all I have really is my uh, Pictish warriors, which are currently now oh, they're on the way back from that little expedition down there so I think what I'm going to do is reroute them over here and then those guys can go up and just check uh, Mombasa make sure there's no barbarian camps around here and then I can hopefully settle the other civilization the uh, other city so let's build a national college that will give me uh, an extra one culture per turn but that's not why I'm building it. I want the additional 50% science and the extra three science per turn. Uh, we are going for the scientific victory, so that's well worth having. I'm really tempted not to move the um, settlers down until I know that that area is clear. So what I'm going to do is put them on sleep. Instead of skipping a turn, because do nothing basically just makes them skip a turn, sleep will make them skip every turn until I tell them to do something otherwise. So let's carry on with that. I always think something's just about to happen when the game lags up a little bit. It's usually because uh, a screen's about to pop up telling me something, but nothing on this occasion. Also, of course, we're going to be able to build universities, which gives us an extra um, two science from jungle tiles worked in the city. And also, we will be able to build Oxford University. Now, Oxford University needs to have a city in every slot. So again, uh, a city in every slot? What am I on about? Uh, to build a university, we need to have a um, university in every city. So again, having a fifth city is just going to make that more expensive. So maybe we'll leave these guys until that's completed. It's probably the most sensible thing to do. I just don't want anybody to beat me to those two very important buildings for the scientific victory. Okay, so Alexander wants to renew his deal of giving me two horses and one iron and one gold per turn in exchange for some dye. 
I have to be honest and say I don't have a problem with that. Um, so I'm just going to go accept. It might have been nice to have the incense for the happiness, but the happiness isn't too bad at the moment. Although it's only on plus three, and if we do settle another city... Ooh, it's like we've met the Washington. people of the United States of America welcome you. So, we have now found our sort of fourth civilization, not counting our own. Um, let's see if we can renew our deal with Ramses. Far by all. Because we were trading dyes to him. What will you give me for this? Horses and gold. Do you have any luxury resources at all? Um, he's going to open his borders as well. So if you give me some copper, what do you want for that? You want furs. Mm, how about no, and how about I open my borders? Now, he doesn't think that's close to a fair deal. He still wants the furs, and I don't think I have a spare furs to give him. So let's take those back off and put it back how it was. That's the deal that he proposed. Okay, I'm sure that was the um, deal that you actually proposed. Right, let's get rid of all the stuff you've got on there. Right, what will you give me for dyes? Gold, horses, and open borders. Fine. Okay. So I've got open borders with him now, which means I can safely move my units through his territory. Because normally you can't move through somebody else's territory unless you are at war with them. Not that it's an issue, because he's miles away from me, and I'm not going to be going down there anyway. So, yeah, I only have one supply of furs, I think. Let's have a look at our resource list. So, yeah, we've got three dyes and we're exporting two. Uh, we only have one furs, one gold, and one porcelain. Uh, we're getting our... We're getting a lot of horses from other people. We're getting our porcelain from um, Tyre, which is a mercantile uh, city-state. And they're the only places that you can get porcelain from. And you can also get jewellery from uh, mer um, mercantile states as well. So... But... Uh, so yeah, we've renewed the deal with Ramses, that's fine. Mombolus, uh, Mombasa seeks the wisdom of a great prophet. We don't have one at the moment, but uh, we might be able to afford one, actually. Can we, can we buy a great prophet? Not that way. Let's return to the map. If we click on here and go to... Purchase. Ah, right. We're going to save for a great profit. So we do need 500 faith, but we can't have a great profit at the moment. We'll probably get one on the next turn, and then we can send it to Mombasa. If we get a great profit. So let's just go to the next turn. Could have done with a great engineer, actually, to speed up the production of the National College. I, th I actually think the National... Well, actually, the National College is probably more important than Oxford University, but the National College is a national wonder, so everyone can everyone can have one of those. And we've got our Great Prophet, which is great. I'm just going to go back in here and put this back to remind me later, which stops it automatically spending faith every time a Great Prophet appears. Uh, as Mombasa requested, you successfully created a Great Prophet. Their scholars are in awe, and your influence with them has increased by 40. So... We can no longer enhance the religion. It's enhanced as much as it can. So what we can do now is spread it. So we're going to start by trying to spread it to Florence. And the unit needs orders because our Pictish warriors have arrived down here. So obviously it uses all their movement to embark on land. We're going to get them up here. Just make sure this area is clear. Truro has now been connected to the capital via a road. So that's some extra gold from that. Washington wants embassy. Don't have a problem with that. It's always a, There's no negative um, consequences really to having embassy with someone. And having an embassy allows you to trade and perform all of the other sort of trade actions. So not, not having embassy is more of a bad thing. Okay, let's try and get these guys around the Germans, who seem to be blocking me at every opportunity. And, well, Washington's right up there. 
Now, having a little look at this, because um, the map type was on random, I'm still not sure whether we're on Pangaea, which is just one large landmass, or whether we are on continents. We could be on continents, but this would mean that we have five civilizations on one continent and three on the other, which I find unlikely. So this could well be Pangaea, but we will see. So let's move these guys up to the high ground. Yep, I thought there might have been a barbarian camp somewhere. And they've got some workers. It looks like these guys are the ones that have been um, causing problems to Mombasa. Hopefully we will get those taken out and... Um, I will probably give those workers... I don't know, actually. I don't know if I'm going to give those workers back to Mombasa. I mean, having workers is always a good thing. But there again, getting the... Uh, right, they're producing units. Getting the extra sort of friendliness from Mombasa, the extra influence for returning those workers could be very, very useful. Um... Can't get to that in a single turn, so I'm going to get down here in the forest. Hopefully, I can take them on the next turn. Cardiff has completed whatever it was building, so what I'm going to do is make some horsemen, because we haven't got any cavalry yet, and we are starting to get these um, barbarians that need dealing with. Mombasa is actually getting ripped apart by barbarians, so I need to clear these out for them. We can adopt a new uh, uh, social policy. We're going to stick with Liberty. And we could have this. Tile improvement construction rate is increased by 25% and a worker appears near the capital. Or plus one production in every city and 5% production in cities when constructing buildings. I think at the moment we go for this one because that allows us to get the um, meritocracy which will give us additional happiness for connected cities. So we'll go for that first. That gives us a worker. Which now means I have a spare worker. So if I can liberate those, I'm happy to give them back to Mombasa now. So, Great Prophet has arrived next to the city. They are going to spread religion. And now Florence is following Voltology. It's already at Mombasa. I think it's already at Tyre. Now what I could do is go and start trying to spread it to other... Um, civilizations. I mean, Athens already has it, which is absolutely fantastic. They're getting more pressure from me than they are from their own uh, their own pantheon. So we are going to get these great prophets to come in down in this direction and try and skirt around the barbarians. We've got some new workers. Now, some of the things you can do with workers, actually, is you can actually tell them to dig a road up. Now, the reason you might want to dig a road up is because... Roads do cost a maintenance charge, so digging them up can be useful. And remember, roads and forts are the only two things that can be built sort of outside of your own territory. Roads and forts can be built on neutral territory as well. But I'm just going to leave them on automated. And they can just go off and do whatever they think is best. They're going to build a farm there. As I've said before, it won't destroy the road because roads can exist on an improved tile. Later on, we'll be able to improve our roads to uh, rail lines, and rail will actually give us even more movement. You'd be surprised how far you can get a land-based unit across the map once you have rail lines. So, we have another production available in Truro. It's been a week since I've played this particular map, this particular game now, so I can't exactly remember what I was heading for here. But... Um, see stable i could build a stable but am i going to build mounted units N unlikely particularly from this place so let's go for the market let's just go for the gold a unit needs orders this will be a decisive victory i don't know where those other um, horsemen went but this is the camp liberated we're going to return the unit the camp's cleared we are allies again um their horsemen are in here causing some problems so we will need to help them out there. We have a caravan. The caravan's previous route was to Florence. I'm happy for it to carry on with that route because I think we've got that fairly uh, barbarian clear at the moment. Let's go on to the next turn. I just hope that those workers don't get recaptured. But even if they do recapture the workers, they're going to have to come back through me again. And if they recapture those workers and I take them back, that'll be another 45 influence I get from them. So I don't mind too much. 
So their city and their archers are firing at them. Now they've put their workers in. Mind you, I can move through their workers. Uh, and they've captured the workers again, just as I education suspected they would. The best okay, education is now complete, which means we can potentially um, build the uh, Oxford University and the universities. We'll look at that in a moment, because I can upgrade these guys. And I think I am going to give them... I don't know what to give them, actually. Let's give them a deal... Um, Heal, well, all units in adjacent towers heal five hit points per turn. But they've already got shock one. Let's give them, I don't know, we've got a lot of rough terrain, so yeah, let's give them drill. So, these bonuses you get for fighting in various terrains, it's actually the terrain that the enemy is in. So, if I'm in, let's say I'm in this tile, which is a, a, a grassland tile, it's, it's, there's, it's open terrain, and my enemy is in the jungle here. Even though I'm in the open terrain, my enemy's in the rough terrain, so it's the rough terrain bonus that I would need to fight them because you go into their tile to fight them. So, yeah, it, when it says fighting units, uh, combat strength when fighting units in rough terrain, it's the units in the rough terrain that I'm fighting. But, decisive victory. We can kill that guy. Again. And return the unit again. We get some faith for it, we return the unit, we get even more influence with them. So, I'm going to get these guys out of their land as soon as possible, just so they don't get too annoyed. And we can choose our next level of research. We are moving up the tree. We could go straight into acoustics, actually, which would put us in the Renaissance era, which is good, because then we could get our first spy, which would be very useful. Um, it is 17 turns away, though. Which is the problem. We could also get our um, Celidy Hall, which is a replacement for the Opera House. And that's a specific building for um, the Celts. Which just gives us a lot of extra happiness and culture, as well as great uh, great work for music slots. And we do need to keep an eye on the happiness. Uh, we could also head out towards Compass and Astronomy and start getting a navy together. Um, chivalry would allow us to build Alhambra, which is actually very useful because it means that all of our uh, land units instantly get drill one, um, which is a really nice boost. And it g gives extra culture output in the city as well. And it gives us knights. Um, there's a lot of really good stuff we could get at this point. I think we're going to have to go metal casting just because it's six turns. That'll give us a forge. Uh, forge gives us extra production when we're building land units and iron uh, any iron that's been worked by the city also gives us extra extra production as well. So that's worth having. And we can also build a workshop. And just like having a granary means that you can set up a trade route between two of your own cities. And you can supply food from a city with a granary to another one of your cities. If you have a workshop, you can pr pr uh, provide production from one city to another. So let's go for the metal casting. Then we'll probably try and grab acoustics if we can or possibly machinery and acoustics because it would be nice um, when you get machinery traveling along roads uh, is actually even quicker so yeah we're going to go for metal casting and then we're going to go for machinery that sounds like a plan it might not necessarily be a good plan but if you remember a few videos back I said have a plan I didn't say it had to be a good plan just have a plan as long as you're doing something don't try not to waste too many turns waiting for stuff to happen. Try to actually be proactive. So let's get these guys out of their territory. And then we can start getting them healed up. They can... Um, we'll have them actually... Why have these guys stopped? We'll have them healing up and fortifying until the next turn. Right, no reachable areas to explore at the moment. So these guys can't actually get anywhere else. Now, some units can embark on water. But uh, it's from a specific part of the science tree. And uh, which one is it through? I can't remember what it is now. Let me find it. Is it just basic sailing? Uh, cargo ship. 
Where is it? Trade routes. I can never remember which one this is. Ah, that's it. Optics. Optics allows land units to embark onto water tiles and travel the ocean. The only problem is it only applies to units that have been created since you had that ability. So, since I've had these guys before that, they can't actually embark, which is a real shame. So, now they're in a position where they can't get in the water and they can't really go anywhere else because... Um, Germany's borders have expanded, which means I can't actually pass through their territory without going to war to them. Uh, this is actually a coast tile, so it's a water tile. I can't move through that. I can't move to this tile because I'd have to go through that one, and I can't get off this little bit of island. My only hope, really, is if I can get open borders with Germany, which I really don't want to do, because I have a feeling that they might get a little bit aggressive later. So if I want him to open his borders... What does he want for that? Two gold for 30 turns. How about no? Just open borders? No. Um, two gold for 30 turns, which is 60 gold. 60 gold is less than it would cost me for a new scout. So I will accept that for the time being. And now these guys are able to move through and out of his land. So we can get them to carry on exploring. Also, as well, they can move through his land now because we have open borders. And when you have open borders, there's no penalty for being in their land. They won't get upset. You won't start losing um, reputation or anything with them because it doesn't work that way. However, if you start amassing your armies in their territories, they might get a little bit annoyed. Even more so if you're actually playing a multiplayer game against humans. Well, Mombasa's going to be allied with us for a while. They seem very friendly. Those guys I'm going to put back on to automation. Apparently they can embark now. I don't know why they wouldn't embark before. Um, let's get them on to exploring again. I was going to say, I, think, I don't think they're my original scouts. Because I think my original scouts got killed and I made some more. Which would have been after optics. But I'm not sure why they didn't want to go in the water. Uh... Unit needs orders, which is these guys. They're going to... Um, actually, let's just get them over here because we can actually upgrade them then. If you have a unit that has any specific useful ability and you upgrade that unit, that unit keeps the upgrade. A good example of that is if you have something like a scout and remember that a scout's specific... Uh, abilities that they ignore the terrain cost. If you have a scout and then you upgrade them, let's say you take them into an ancient ruins and upgrade them into a composite bowman. Oh, Petra's now finished. Um, you upgrade them to a composite bowman, they will still retain their ability to ignore the terrain bonus, the terrain penalty, which is really good because it means you can end up having like archers that can move through forests two hexes at a time, which is absolutely brilliant. Um, Great profits. We are going to try and head down this way. Hopefully get there in one piece. Don't want to lose them along the way. Um, Cardiff has now adopted the religion. Dublin has finished whatever it was building. We Now, what do we go for? We're not doing too well on happiness at the moment. Happiness has dropped down quite a lot. Can't build a circus because I don't have any horses nearby so we might as well get them working on their university edinburgh might as well do its university and we have another caravan here this caravan was uh, i'm not sure where this was previously trading it's not showing me anywhere now where would be the best place to go so as you can see we're now seeing religion on these city-states and you'll see religion on any uh, major civilization or any city that has uh, a religion and each caravan uh, provides and returns six pressure from that religion now this isn't a problem if I'm trading with Florence because Florence have the same religion I do so the trade back and forwards between religions isn't going to affect me so it's worth noting that if you have one city trading with a lot of different cities it's quite possible that you'll bring somebody else's religion back and overwhelm your own I'm going to trade with um, Tyre because it's the same amount as gold as I would get from Florence 
and they have our religion as well. I think we're fairly safe down there. No reason not to. We're not quite close enough to trade with any of the other civilizations yet. Maybe once we get another city down here, that'll change. But we'll see how that works out. We're going to upgrade these guys. We're going to heal them up. See, Ty wanted a trade route, and we've now given one. That gives us an extra 40 influence with them. Which is just what we wanted. Not an awful lot else to do on this turn, so let's carry on. Unit needs orders. I thought we'd given them orders. Right, now they didn't want to move into that hex. Which means there's something in that hex. Although we did see that the Germans were messing around down there earlier. So it's quite possible it's it's their guys still at the bottom. And this is what happens. Sometimes if you set a unit to move, say, six, seven turns in advance. And every now and then it'll, they'll just stop. They'll move, like, one or two turns. And then it will say they need orders. And that's normally because something has moved into the hex that they were supposed to go in. So it gets cancelled. Um, we now have an unhappiness of one, which is not a good thing. Choose research. We said we were going to go for machinery. Let's have a look and see. We know we've still got a spare dies that we can export. So let us see if we've got anyone that wants dies from us. Let's try Washington. Go ahead. Uh, what have you got? You've got pearls, marble, and wine. Right, what do you want for dyes? What will you, what will you give me for dyes? No. Any deal we suggest would result in an unfair exchange for you. You see, this this is um, the sort of how humble Washington is. It's like, you'll offer him stuff, and he's like, no, we can't, I can't give you anything that, that'll match that. Um, I don't think we've got any wine. Is the following ah. trade of interest to you? But now he wants me to give him half the empire in exchange for some booze, which is not really what I had in mind. Um, what about marble? No. No, I think he's. Now we sort of. I see they're losing a lot of gold. And I think they only have one of each of these resources, which is a bit of a problem. Okay, not to worry. Um, I think we're already. Ex Who are we exporting the other two? Two. Doesn't tell me here anymore. Um, so, let's see if we can... Let's have a look with Germany. Was nun? Was habt ihr gesagt? Right. Do you have any luxury... Right, you have incense and you have copper. No. Yeah, but they only have sort of one of everything. And this is the thing. If you only have one of something, you you don't want to trade it out because you'll lose the happiness for trading it out. And then it, the whole the whole affair just becomes pointless. This is now getting more, even more important that I should try and set up another city here and get this sugar because that would be another luxury resource. What I'm going to have to do is let's just have a look and see. Let's purchase a Colosseum. There we go. At least we're back in the positive now. Didn't want to have to spend my money doing that. In fact, I probably could have just built one, but it's not worth the slowdown you get for production by having the unhappiness. Okay, Ty's pl plinking at barbarians. The chances are that another barbarian camp has spawned down here now because there's no um, map coverage. So it's quite well possible that they've respawned another camp. These guys have got in this territory finally, so let us upgrade them to pikemen. They can't do anything else this turn, but they should gain health because they're not actually doing anything. Accumulated enough faith to purchase a unit or a building. And we can do that in any um, any city that's following that religion. So we could build a missionary. And I don't think... Or we probably already have one there. Where else is following? I think Cardiff is now. So what we could do... Yeah, I don't think we can have one of our religious buildings. We need to get one of those. I don't see any point in making a, a missionary or inquisitor at the moment. I'm going to leave that until we actually need one. Cardiff can build something else, though. And we should probably get them building a university. It's going to take them a long time, though. 
Although they are growing. In, in, on the next turn, they are going to go up to a city size of 10. That will give them some more production. And we have our horsemen. So let's get our horsemen down here to provide some more cover. Obviously, the horsemen have uh, much better movement ability than infantry. But they're quite weak to spearmen and pikemen and that sort of thing. So you do have to keep them safe. But I've got all these horses. And I'm, you know, not really using them for anything. I think Ty should be alright taking out that. Yeah, not a problem for them. Hopefully my great prophets will still get down to Greece and we'll try and spread our religion absolutely everywhere to them if we can. Let's move these guys down a little bit further. So as you can see, they actually have a move, base movement of four instead of two. So it's double what you'd get for most ground-based units. Okay, so these guys are just going to get to heal up. So as you can see, they still get their combat bonus outside friendly territory. Uh, still get no movement cost to pillage, which is one of the bon benefits you get from the uh, Pictish Warriors. But they also get bonus versus mounted. So pikemen and spearmen um, get a, a, a bonus against cavalry. And they've still got the drill and the shock, which are the original promotions they had before. So it's well worth keeping units alive and getting them promoted up. Dublin's going to grow on the next turn. Cardiff should grow on the next turn. And what I want to do is to get every single one of my cities to have a university so we can build Oxford University and then I will found my fifth city. So Cardiff has grown. It's still going to take it a while to finish its university. Right, yeah, there were Germans down here. That's why I was having some trouble getting through the train. Got to go through a lot of forest, which is a bit of a pain. Um, I'm going to sit these guys up here atop the hill. I might just keep moving them around just to keep my eye on things. They've got some movement left over, so I'm just going to put them on alert. Carry on with the next turn. Looks like Mombasa's uh, plinking out extra workers so that it can repair the damage or the pillaging that the barbarians did. So if I haven't explained pillaging before, which I don't think I have, if you go onto an enemy's tile with a, a military unit, you have the option to pillage. And what pillaging does is it destroys the upgrade, or at least it damages the upgrade on the tile. The upgrade is still there, technically, but it's no longer uh, in working order. You actually get some gold from pillaging the tile. And whoever owns the tile has to then use workers to repair it to get the benefit back from the upgrade. Now, that's one of the good things about the um, Pictish Warriors, is it doesn't actually cost them any movement points to pillage a tile. So you can move onto a tile, you can pillage it, and you can move straight out. Whereas with most units, if you moved onto a tile and pillaged it, that would be all of their, all of their movement points used up. So, let's go on to the next turn. It's also worth noting you can pillage trade routes as well, so if you land on an enemy caravan or an enemy cargo ship, you can pillage it. It destroys their caravan or ship, and you gain a fairly decent amount of gold from doing it. Bear in mind, you can only do it to people you're at war with. Uh, actually, that's not true. You can do it to people who you're not at war with, but should you do that, you will then be at war with them. So, we need to find our way in there. Edinburgh's now finished with its college. Uh, still got this problem where I can't build the university because I still need universities in Dublin, Cardiff and Truro. Is it worth me trying to build anything else? The East India Trading Company would be nice. I need a market in Truro to do that. Can I afford to buy a market in Truro? Um, no, because a market is 500 gold and I don't have 500 gold. Oh, they're, they're five turns away from doing the market. Okay, I was already building the market there. Brilliant. So, if that's the case, I want to build something here that's going to take only five or six turns. And I'm going to go for the uh, Canversary. So, that will give us a bit of extra gold. These guys have now healed up. So, let's get them... Let's get them out here, which is where I... Where was I going to put that other city? Around here somewhere was where I was going to put it. So let's get them out in that direction. Right, the happiness has just gone up again. That's good. That's because I think we've just added truffles to our list. I don't think we had that before. So I think we've just got truffles. That might have been what did it. 
Right, where can we do production? In Dublin. What are we going to build in Dublin? Let's go for the circus. Let's get the happiness up while we can. Let's go for another turn. Right, well, we weren't going to build the Great Mosque, so I'm not too worried about that. Tidy uh, Desires Agna Watt. Well, we could build that, but not at the moment. The press is the best instrument. Machinery is now completed. Dies to Ramses has ended, so let's see if we can redo this deal with them. Uh, luxury resources. I have spare dice. What will you give me for this? Um... Hmm, a lot of gold. But he doesn't have any luxury resources to give me. Uh, I'll, I'll take your gold. I don't mind. I will take your gold. Right, where are we going to go now after we have machinery? We could go for chivalry. We could go for compass. Physics would give us trebuchet, which is good. Although we're not really fighting, so not all that good. Acoustics would give us an ability to gain more happiness, though. So we should probably think about doing that. And it's only eight turns away. Although building Gallius and a harbour. Yeah. We've got, to, we've got to go Compass first. Compass will allow us to build a harbour. Which means we can then trade from, uh, our, cap uh, from our coastal cities as well. So we're going to do that. These guys are going to stay there and alert. We're going to go into the next turn, we're going to make a move, and that will then probably be the end of this video. And then when I come back next time, hopefully we'll be able to get Oxford University built and possibly get our fifth city founded. We can already see on the mini-map there, it looks like Greece has only got three. Germany appears to have five cities. Um, we can see three of Egypt's, they may have more, and we can see one of America. Although I do think that America possibly has another one uh, over here to the north. There's a very, very slight line on the minimap. It's difficult to actually tell. Um, but I do have my suspicions that they have... See, they have a plantation up here. And it looks like it's outside of this city's border. So if they've got a plantation there outside of this city, then they must have uh, another city up there so that their borders come in this direction. That's one of the th reasons why this strategic view is very useful. You can see at a glance what upgrades are in various areas of the map. It's a, it's a, it looks quite messy, and it takes a little bit of getting used to to work out what it all means, but it's very, very useful for working out. You see road connections on there and everything, so it is a really, really useful view. For checking certain things out. A unit needs orders. These guys... Alright, oh, so my religion is now actually spread out to Corinth. Because it was coming out from Athens. So let's head down to Sparta. And then hopefully we can spread it to them as well. And then that should be the Greeks well and truly infested with Voltology. Uh, a unit still needs orders. Which is another caravan. Now, what I can actually do is... Wow, how far away... Oh, Chicago. Well, that was very sneaky of them, wasn't it? Settling that uh, over here. Wow, I'm actually quite amazed. I, th that's obviously very new. That wasn't there before. It's, I mean, it's, it's one turn. Wow. Unfortunately for them, they can't expand much in this direction because Cardiff has expanded out this way very fast. And also, they can't overtake my borders. What I've got to... What I want to do, which is a bit naughty, and I'm going to do it anyway, is I'm going to buy those two tiles. And now that's really stuffed their expansion up. Um, but what I'm also going to do is, while they're there, I'm going to trade with them. I will be giving them two science per turn, which means that I'm more scientifically advanced than them. And in return, I will be getting one science per turn back. And four gold. So it's kind of the same deal that I was getting with Mombasa, only I'll be getting an additional science from it. A downside, I'm giving them two science, but I'm more scientifically advanced than them anyway. So I don't mind too much. And that's all the moves we can make on that turn. So we need to work on increasing the happiness a bit. I might start pulling these guys back actually, because one, they could do with an upgrade. And two, I'm a little bit concerned now that uh, America started to encroach on my borders. And I'm not even playing the Shoshone. 
So that is really all the moves that I can make on this turn. So I'm going to end the video there. Thanks again for watching, guys. I hope you're still enjoying it. And as always, if you do have any questions about anything, send me a message or leave them in the comments and I will do my best to answer them. And on the next video, hopefully we'll make some more significant progress. So guys, until next time, I've been Unstable Voltage and I'll see you on the next video. Goodbye for now.